Okay, our next topic is gonna to be third trimester bleeding or late trimester bleeding. And the way we're gonna figure this out, the way we're gonna approach this is by categorizing it into either painless or painful bleeding. And basically, if a patient comes in with late or third trimester bleeding and it's painless, I want you to think of either placenta previa or vasa previa. Now, placenta previa is gonna be defined as vaginal bleeding that ceases spontaneously with or without uterine contractions. A lot of times the, the case history is gonna include a history of trauma, coitus, or a recent pelvic exam right before the bleeding is um, starting. Risk factors include prior C-section, multiple gestation, multiparity, as well as advanced age, and a prior placenta previa. You're gonna diagnose this by ultrasound. And basically, we're gonna manage this based on the maternal stability. Now, the one thing you wanna remember in the management of placenta previa is that you do no cervical exams. Pelvic exams are contraindicated. So basically, what you're gonna do is you're gonna see is the mother stable or not. Now, if the mother, mother or the fetus is in jeopardy, if there's maternal or fetal jeopardy, you're gonna do an emergency C-section. And this makes logical sense. If there's fetal or maternal jeopardy, you're gonna do an emergency C-section. If the lower placental edge is greater than two centimeters from the internal cervical os, you're gonna do vaginal delivery. And if the mother is stable and it's after fetal lung maturity, and we know fetal lung maturity is when? It's at the 36th week, right? So if the mother is stable and it's after fetal lung maturity, this is when we're gonna do a scheduled C-section and we're gonna monitor the mom and the fetus closely. And we know when uh, placenta previa is actually when the placenta is implanted in the lower uterine segment and it usually occurs um, over a previous uterine scar because the villi is actually going to invade into the deeper layers of the decidua basalis. And what we wanna remember for this most importantly is that there's no fetal distress. So what are you gonna do if a woman comes in with third trimester bleeding, you're gonna see if it's painful or painless, and if it's painless and there's no fetal distress, you're gonna do an ultrasound, and you're gonna see if is, is there a maternal or fetal jeopardy. If there is, you're gonna do an emergency C-section because there's jeopardy. If the mother's stable and there's fetal lung maturity, you're gonna schedule a C-section. And only if you meet this criteria of uh, the lower placental edge being over two centimeters from the internal cervical os, can you do vaginal delivery. Now, vasa previa, same thing, third trimester, late trimester bleeding, it's gonna be painless, but vasa previa, on the other hand, there is going to be fetal heart changes. So here where we said there's no fetal heart distress, vasa previa is gonna have fetal heart rate changes that's gonna be progression from tachycardia to bradycardia to sinusoidal pattern. Now, vasa previa is actually life-threatening for the fetus, okay? Uh, fetal exanuation and death occur rapidly, and the classic triad is going to be rupture of membranes, painless vaginal bleeding, as well as fetal bradycardia. And always, you're always your first step is gonna be emergency C-section. So it's kind of easy. We have a third trimester bleeding. First you wanna see is it painless or painful. Once you figure out it's, it's painless, you wanna see if the fetus is in distress. If there's no fetal distress, you're thinking placenta previa and you're gonna manage accordingly. And if there is fetal distress, you're gonna go right to emergency C-section. Now, in third trimester bleeding, you can have painful bleeding as well. And if it's painful bleeding, it's usually not gonna be these two. It's gonna be either abrupto placenta or uterine rupture. Abrupto placenta is the patient's gonna present with dark red vaginal bleeding that's associated with painful uterine contractions. This is usually gonna occur around 30 weeks. And basically, in abrupto, it's gonna be a sudden onset of vaginal bleeding, and there's gonna be severe, constant pelvic pain, okay? And a lot of times, it's gonna be in the setting of hypertension or trauma. A lot of times, it may be in the setting of a motor vehicle accident. But the main thing you wanna remember is that it's a sudden onset, and it's gonna be painful bleeding, and it's gonna be associated with painful uterine contractions. Now, um, our first step here in abrupto placenta is gonna be the insertion of a large bore IV as well as a Foley catheter. Once again, we're gonna do, we're gonna manage these patients based on the, the stability. If the, if the patient is stable, we're gonna to do tocolysis with magnesium sulfate, 
and we have to remember Ritortin is contraindicated in pregnancy. If the bleeding is heavy, but the bleeding is controlled, or the pregnancy is over 36 weeks, we're going to do vaginal delivery. And if the patient is unstable, we're going to do emergency C-section, just like we did in the placenta previa. And if, the, if, if there was maternal jeopardy, we're going to do emergency C-section. Same thing over here. If the patient's unstable, we're going to do emergency C-section. In VESA, it's always unstable, so you're going straight to emergency C-section. So abrupto placenta, you're going to think of in the setting of hypertension or trauma. It's going to be dark, red vaginal bleeding, painful uterine contractions. You're going to insert a large bore IV, patient stable, tocolysis with magnesium. If it's heavy but controlled or the pregnancy is over 36 weeks, vaginal delivery. And if the patient's unstable, emergency C-section. And finally, we're going to go over uterine rupture. Uterine rupture, same thing. Third trimester, late trimester bleeding, but it's painful. And basically, this patient's going to come in. You're going to look at the history. And they're going to come in with a history of a uterine scar. Um, excessive oxytocin administration is a common history they're going to come in with. And these patients are going to come in with a sudden onset of abdominal pain and vaginal bleeding, um, lost with electronic fetal heart rate, uterine contractions, and recession of the fetal head. Um, our risk factors are going to be um, our classic uterine incision, like we just talked about. Um, a previous myomectomy, as well as excessive oxytocin stimulation. Now, we're going to treat these patients by surgery, okay? But basically, if the patient is stable and they're a young woman, we're going to do a uterine repair. Or if the patient is unstable, we're going to do a hysterectomy. Another time we're going to do hysterectomy is if the patient does not want further pregnancy. If she doesn't desire further pregnancy and they're stable, we can also do a hysterectomy. So we're going to do uterine repair in stable patients or stable patients that don't um, desire future pregnancy. We can also do a hysterectomy. But if they're unstable, we must do a hysterectomy. So basically, when you get third trimester bleeding, you're going to see is it painless or is it painful? If it's painless, you're going to see is the fetus in distress? If the fetus is in distress, it's going to be vasa previa. We're going to do emergency C section. If there's no fetal distress, you're going to diagnose placenta previa. You're never going to do a pelvic exam. If there is maternal or fetal jeopardy, emergency C-section. If the mother's stable, we're going to schedule a C-section. And if the lower placental edge is over two centimeters from the internal cervical os, we're going to do vaginal delivery. If it's painful bleeding and we have a setting of hypertension or trauma and it's dark red bleeding associated with painful contractions, we're going to first insert a large bore IV in Foley. If the patient's stable, we're going to tocalize them with magnesium and know that retortin is contraindicated. If they're unstable, emergency C-section. And if the bleeding is heavy but controlled or the pregnancy is over 36 weeks, vaginal delivery. And in uterine rupture, we're always going to do surgery. And if it's stable, we're going to do uterine repair. And if it's unstable, we're going to do hysterectomy. And this is everything you need to know on third trimester bleeding, which is super important for your exam, so make sure you know it.